please do roll call. Len Joey. Present. Mike Hume. Here. Russ Lockley. Here. And Ayanami. Yeah. So let the record uh, show that we have uh, four uh, voting members tonight. Um, fire exits are behind you. They lead out into the hallway and then out, outside. The ones behind us lead back into the building, so they're not fire exits. Could I have a... You guys have all read the uh, minutes of last meetings, the last month's meetings. Um, I'll entertain a motion to... Uh, okay, well, can you approve the minutes from February meeting? Second. Second. Motion's been made by Eddie and seconded by Mike, that we use that the uh, we approve the minutes from the February meetings. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Yep. Ayes have it. Harry, it says February one meeting. The, um, that was right. So there was a set of minutes from the regular meeting and a set of minutes from the appeal ratification. I'll entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. Second. Motion made by um, Mike. Mike. Seconded by uh, Lenny to approve the special meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Of the opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Okay, ratification of decisions. We have none, Mr. Chairman. We go straight to old business with the uh, Faithful Friends Farm. Okay. Is the applicant here, Ralph Chippy or Tara Crossley or Andrew Moore? Hello, Mr. Chair, member of the board, uh, James Callahan again on behalf of Faithful Friends Farm with Kira Crossley. Uh, I think we. Uh, Where am I? Oh, let's swear Sure. Please raise your right hand. Uh, if you swear to tell the whole truth in front of this board. I do. I do. Thank you. Um, both names. Yep. Thank you. Great. Uh, so I think last time we were here, uh, there were a number of concerns the board had, including a site visit. I believe three of you came out and looked at the property, which is, I think, positive. Uh, you wanted to check the fence out, which I think also was positive. Um, we were in contact with animal control. They've had no issues. Uh, the insurance is in effect. Uh, Kira checked out the um, business license, which you did not need. It was actually a trade name with a town clerk. That's been applied for. And uh, they have privately contract with a trash company to take care of any refuse that's uh, outstanding. And if Kira wants to add, we're happy to ask her any questions. You need to. So. I was so it's good. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. I get to see him twice. So. <laughs> um, okay. If you want to have a seat, see if anybody else in there. The audience has anything to say one way or the other. So I'm going to have a question. John, how about you? <laughs> Nothing in the uh, in the e world there. Uh, Make a motion. We vote on this tonight. So second. Motion was made and seconded to vote on this um, issue tonight. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it. Um, as following in the, our chairman's way, we'll do a uh, vote, poll vote. Eddie, how do you vote on this? Approve. Approve. Approve it. And uh, chairman also approves. Motion has been approved. Good luck. Thank you. Under new business, we have the owner applicant, Robert Pritchard. The location is AP 52, lot 58, 1429 Main Street. The zone is R20. Applicant is seeking a special use permit and dimensional variance to construct a 17 foot 8 inch by 14 feet by 14 feet, 10 inch addition on the back side of the house, 18 feet from the rear property line where 30 is required. Applicants, come up, please. Raise your right hand. Are you going to give test one or two? If you need me to, yeah. Okay. Do um, you uh, swear to tell the truth before this board? Yes, I do. State your name for the record. Uh, Robert Pritchard, 1429 Main Street, Coventry, Rhode Island. John Figueroa, 7 Twin Lakes Ave, Coventry. Okay, Mr. Pritchard, tell us what you want to do. 
what we want to do is the no-season room. Uh, we have a, we're going to come off our deck. We have a deck 14 by 14. It's going to come behind the house, and it's going to go to the right of, right of the deck. It's the extra three feet, four feet. Are you going to remove the deck? Yes. Okay, so it's kind of going to take the place or of the deck, yep. right? And the trees that were around it and everything like that, they're all going to be cleaned up. Uh, for the record, I am in the butter, but uh, this is across the street. I have known to spread that for a long time. And uh, got a nice clean place, and I don't really see a big problem. I'm not trying to force it. I just want to tell you that I live across the street. I don't have the problem with falling out of the butter. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody get any questions? No, it's pretty clean. It's it's looks like a good design. It, it's absolutely. Um, it's a non-conforming lot, so that's why he's here before us. Um, basically, you know, because it's it's just a change to that. So, um, no neighbors have any issues. I think I'm going to ask. But, um, we do have a favorable recommendation from the planning board. So, uh, you're going to contract that, I'm assuming. Please, you're the contractor. I did the blueprints for Oh, you did the blueprints, okay. Uh, you want to have a seat and see if anybody, well, just kind of step over and see if anybody in the audience has anything to say, any questions to ask about this project? John, anything? Okay. Um, yes, say the motion. Make a motion. motion. Vote on it tonight. Second. Well, motion has been made and seconded that we vote on this issue tonight. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, so voted. Eddie, how do you uh, how do you vote on this? I approve as presented. Approve as presented. Mike? Approve as presented. Lenny? Approve as presented. And the chair also approved as presented. Next motion. Mr. Chair, for the record, do you, uh, do you adopt the um the the um report from the claim as a basis for your decision? We take it under consideration. Uh, does that need to be in the minutes? That we... Well, just so that if I write the decision, I can I can identify the reasons why it qualified. Well, the, um, the planning commission reviewed it, and they they they, they <clears throat> the, the property has permanent physical access to Main Street. Construction of proposed expansion will not alter the effect of feasibility of existing driveway. Property is in sufficient off street park has sufficient off street parking. Property is adequate space for trash, storage of trash receptacles is needed and room for trash pickup. Utilities are pre-existing. There should be no need for additional screening or buffering as the adjacent areas are all residential. No signs are proposed. Open space requirements are not applicable. Abutting properties in surrounding neighborhood is primarily single family residential. This use is compatible with the abutting lots. Uh, compliance with industrial performance standards not applicable. Com comprehensive plan identifies the R20 zone as the suburban areas character characterized by medium density residential development. The proposed is compatible with the comprehensive plan. If the applicant if the applicant is issued a special use permit, this project should have no dimensional impacts to the public healthy health, safety, and welfare of morals and morals. Thank you. I just again, I just want to make sure that when I write the decision. I can incorporate these findings. That's all. That's why I wanted that. You can. Thank you very much. Well. You're all done. We'll be notified by email or something like that. No, typically what happens is the decision will get written. It'll be ratified at the next meeting, which is April 5th. And then it will be recorded within the next day or two. And then I will mail out the decisions. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the next applicant owner is Main Street Donuts LLC. Location is AP 45, lot 22, unit 21, 24, Sh Coventry Shoppers Park. Zone is general business. Applicant is seeking a dimensional relief to install 18-inch sign on the easterly side of the building. Good evening, Thomas Cronin for the owner and applicant, Main Street Donuts. Do you swear to tell the whole truth in front of this board? I do. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. You're welcome. So we're here tonight to... Uh, rectify uh, a situation that we're unsure about. We want to make sure that we're sure. Uh, when this project was uh, approved by this board and others in town more than 10 years ago, uh, there was a note that we were to go to zoning with regard to the sign on the side of the building. Uh, nobody can find a record that we ever did go before this board and get that approval, uh, but the sign has been there for numerous years since. 
Uh, you are, you know that um, this building recently underwent renovation, and when it did, they replaced the sign in the front, uh, which faces 117 Main Street. Um, but there was no authorization. I couldn't find it either. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand here and blame anybody. Maybe Mr. Bernero. Um, that uh, that uh, shows that we have the authority to put up that sign. So um, everyone's familiar with this uh, Dunkin' Donuts on the corner of South Main Street and Main Street and Coventry. The store itself faces easterly into the Shoppers Park with the drive through which faces Main Street. Uh, the constriction here is that the entrance to this Dunkin' Donuts is actually the entrance to the shoppers park. So it, it just makes it a little confusion. And again, not blaming Mr. Bernero for the design here, but if you're coming westerly on main street and you get to Dunkin' Donuts, you're too late. You can't get there. Right. So you have to make the turn before Dunkin' Donuts into the plaza fight with the nice people who go to Dave's every day. Right. You know, and, make that left. So that's the, the zoning reason that we are here is that approaching westerly on Main Street, you have to make that right-hand turn into the plaza before you actually get to Dunkin' Donuts. You know, by the time, if you go through that light, you, you can't go to Dunkin' Donuts. So people can see it. See it, right. It's a D, it's a DD now, not as uh, glamorous as it once was because they're, they're more interested in selling you coffee and drinks now than they are donuts. That's unofficial. Don't, I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that. But um, it's 18 feet, so three feet high by five and a half feet wide. It is internally lit, uh, but that's, that's the entire thing. So not quite as uh, graphic as that one there, but in exactly that same place. So uh, we need a sign variance for an additional sign on the building. That's the request. Basically, we're replacing the sign that was there, and and it's already been replaced. We just need permission. We did not put it up. It it's, doesn't say D and D right now. It does not. We we have it. It's there, but we did not put it up. It's just the sign that says Duncan over the drive-through right now. So, Tom, is it location or is it size? It is number. So you're only allowed to have one wall sign on your building in the general business or commercial zone. We, uh, we went through the same thing with Centerville Bank a couple of weeks ago when they changed a couple of weeks ago, a couple of years ago, uh, when they changed to a one way system, had the same problem. If you were coming down Tioga Avenue and you got to Centerville Bank, it was too late. Every, every driveway after that was an exit. So it's the same kind of situation. That's it. There's no. Okay. Any questions? Well, I just need to, and I'm a property, a butter, but I have no issue with it. So just so it's on the record. Okay. Okay. I'll step away. Anybody in the audience have anything, you know, any questions, anything to say about this uh, one way or the other? John, you got anything? Stand a motion to vote. To vote on this. Motion has been made and seconded to vote on this tonight. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed, Nag? The ayes have it. Eddie? Yes, sir. You approve. I approve. I approve. I approve. Chair also approves. Uh, this, uh, this application has been approved. <clears throat> Thank you. Next application is Joseph Mops and Lynn Mops are the owners. Laura Mops is the applicant. Location is AP 57, Lot 8, 210 Pine Haven Road. Zone is R2. Applicant is seeking a dimensional variance to construct a new single family home 15 feet from the front yard setback where 35 feet is required. Hello, Thomas Cronin for the owner and applicant. The owners are uh, Laura, Joseph, and Lynn Mops, so all three of them. I'm, they somehow got segregated there, but uh, they all own the property together. Must have been the guy that filled out the application. Must have been. I probably ran out of space in, in, those, little, again? in those little boxes. Was it Bernero again? Yeah. So, um, you still have the old truck? Well, no. Oh, that's too bad. I love that. Yeah, I would, it I, turned I would green. Never have sold it if I had known, I thought my, my grandmother had sold it quickly without talking um, to anybody in the family. And there was uh, half a truck underneath. 
trailer too. Really? We had to yeah. take it all out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So raise your right hand. He's going to swear us in, okay? Can you swear to tell the whole truth in front of this board? We, we do. Please state your name. Joseph B. Mops, the second, 210 Pine Haven, Coventry, Rhode Island. Lynn Mops, 210 Pine Haven. Laura A. Mops, uh, I will be at 210 Pine Haven if this is approved. I'm now at uh, uh, Royal Press Apartments. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you just give me the address for the record? Uh, it's 20 Cedar Pond Drive, Apartment 6. Warwick. Warwick. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, well, they just put up there, John put it up on the map. So AP 57, lot 8, 210 Pine Haven Road. It's zoned R2. It's in a residential neighborhood. Uh, the houses across the street have backyards adjacent to Johnson's Pond. Um, it's a not to standard town road. It's only a 30 foot right away. It's not the straightest road you ever saw. So uh, the existing use is residential, as you can see, passes in front of the property to the south. Uh, there's a two bedroom manufactured home on the site right now. Uh, it's marked on the northern part of the property uh, in the, it's just a rectangle. Uh, it's not too much detail, but there it is. Uh, the proposal is to build a new single family home, two bedroom, two car garage, about 2000 square feet, including the garage on the property. As you can see from the diagram, there's an existing garage on the property, which will remain. There's a new OWTS septic system uh, to the east, um, which has already been constructed. And there's an old cesspool to the west of the proposed home, which will, is abandoned because of the new um, septic, but it's still there. So it's just, uh, there's a well, which has been placed in the northwest corner of the property, which will remain in use, and a well to the straight north, which will be um, abandoned. So those, those are the landmarks. Um, I, I was telling the Mops family that uh, we had a meeting in the office today and we laid out this map and uh, we brainstormed about words to use to describe the shape of this lot. And uh, in the hallway, the Mops told me that they say it's shaped like an M. And that seems to be the best uh, description I can come up with. Oh. Yeah, I called it a chevron in the application, like sergeant stripes, yeah. but it's not not quite uh, symmetrical though, so that it doesn't quite fit. That looks like an open book. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the uh, the request here is um, well, the the lot is non-conforming to begin with; doesn't have enough frontage. We're not going to change this, the lineage of the lot at all. It's going to remain, that'll remain the same, just to let you know that that is the case. You can see from the shape of the lot that they can't square up the lot, the house to the front of the lot, anywhere but where they have uh, placed it here on that lot. The, uh, if they put it uh, where the pointy part of that uh, street front is, it would touch both of the uh, front lot lines and so we're left to place it where we have it here. Um, there are uh, reduced setbacks uh, because it's a non-conforming uh, lot, but we meet all the setbacks except for the front yard setback. So our request here is to have a diminished front yard setback of the closest point of the house will be 15 feet from the 30 foot right away owned by the town. So the, um, the house itself will be squared up to the street on that side, and the garage will be the closest point to the, to the street with the house and uh, porch just slightly behind that. And uh, it'll remain, as I mentioned, this, a single family home with two bedrooms will be occupied by the extended family. So given the constraints, of the uh, shape of the lot and the uh, frontage and the roadway, this is seems to be the best solution 
and we request a variance to a front yard setback from the board. Yeah, the septic system is designed for how many uh, bedrooms? Three, three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. Yeah, it's designed for three. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I, I should have told you this before, but uh, the, she's taking the minutes, so we're only going to speak one at a time. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I didn't know if you knew. No, yeah, no, that's fine. The old subject system, is that in use at, at this point? Not at all. No, it's it, uh, being dismantled or taken It's going to be filled in with pea stone and when I have the excavator come to dig the foundation. I'm just going to take care of that. And the well is not the side of that, right? Of the yeah. new septic system? Right. It's way in the back corner. Yeah, straight in that top left corner. Uh, brand new well. Thank you, John. Except that approved by me and was oh, yeah. to, to fill it with these ones. Yeah. What about the order? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, no disrespect, but it's going to make the place a little bit lot nicer. Absolutely. Right That's the goal. Trailer, yeah. <laughs> Channel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody oh, want to take a seat? Okay. Does anybody want to speak on this? Um, yes, ma'am. Come right up. Raise your right hand. State your name. Dorothy LeBeau. I'm sorry? Dorothy LeBeau. Okay. Ernest LeBeau. And your address? 225 Pine Haven Road, Coventry, Rhode Island. Do you swear to tell the whole truth in front of this board? Yes. Thank you. Can you spell your last name for the record, please? Yes. L-E, capital B-E-A-U. Thank you. What would you like to say? What's your concerns? Um, here are some of the reasons that we object to the proposed variance of 210 Pine Haven. Uh, the, the post office considers this road to be unsafe because the road is too narrow and they will not make home deliveries. During winter months when this will create additional challenges for snow placement that may deter other delivery companies from making home deliveries. We have received notice from the town that due to a neighbor parking his car on his own property, that trash removal may be refused because the town trucks cannot turn around. Uh, that property? Yes, it's in the road. It's a circular. Yep. Smaller. This variance would further impede this turnaround issue. We were told by the town we would have to bring our trash four tenths of a mile up to the top of the street onto Route 117. We were told by who? The town. The town, okay. Uh, during, this is approved. Are they coming and picking up your trash? They still are because the neighbor moved his car off his property. Moved it off the property? Off, well, they moved. Uh, it was on his own property, but he had to move it on another place on his property. So the trucks would. Turn right. Yeah. OK. Uh, during the winter uh, storms, this would make snow removal more difficult in the placement of the snow plowed snow, thus compounding the trash removal issue. Currently, water drainage is an issue during heavy storms as the water runs under the carport at our residence, 225 Pine Haven, and freezes solid. Bringing the home closer to the street would promote additional drainage problems as the grade would need to slope away from the new home, causing additional drainage issues for 225 Pine Haven. The well of 225 Pine Haven is currently at a depth of 13 feet. With additional drainage and or moving the foundation of 210 Pine Haven closer to the road, Osper and the variants disturb the current water table, thus affecting the well at 225 Pine Haven. Over the past and, cu and currently, the 210 Pine Haven Road property has been used for storage of abandoned vehicles in an RV which was used in the past for housing folks. Our objection is by creating more open property after removing the existing manufactured home that other temporary housing may be put in place since there has been a previous history of this or storage of abandoned vehicles. So I have some questions. Um, the lot is located in the R2 zone, it is a pre existing non conforming lot of record. What is the non conformity? And does this mean that a variance was given once before? That's question one. 
Question two, if the zoning variance is approved for 210 Pine Haven, Pine Haven and the water table is depleted from the current level at 225 Pine Haven due to the construction, who will be responsible for digging the well deeper? The house at 225 Pine Haven is, was built in 1949 and has never had a problem with the level of the water table. The next question. Why does the garage need to be perpendicular to the road as stated in the project narrative? And why can't the house be moved back to where the existing manufactured home is? I'm done. Anything else? No, I'm done. So question number one, I can answer that one. It's a non-conforming, the non-conformity is that it's a pre-existing non-conforming lot, meaning it doesn't meet the required two acre zoning in that area. Okay. I don't know the size of your lot, but um, if you're smaller than the two acre zone, those lots were existing before the current zoning was enacted. So you had those lots, say for instance, at a quarter or half an acre, and then later on down the line, they changed the zoning to a two acre minimum. That's where the non-conformity comes in. Okay, thank you. John, can you address any of the, the concerns about the elevation? Um, well, I will say that um, if this does get approved, the applicant would need to um, get a building permit from the building department that gets signed off on by various other departments, including planning and zoning, but also more importantly, including the town engineer. So that would all be addressed at that at that stage of approval, soil erosion, sediment control, things of that nature by the town engineer. And how about their concern about the well? Um, again, they have to get a well permit. Um, no, no, their well, is it, it, it is, is there anything, we have any information that we can put forward that that would ease their concerns about losing their well if they, if they Dig the new well. Right. Uh, I, I don't have to that. sure. I don't have specific information about um, this particular property versus their well, their particular well. Um, but again, they would have to get a permit um, from the building department to get that. And assuming that all the uh, regulations are met, um, then they should be okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, is the well currently there or is that to be drilled? It's currently there. It's, oh, it's already there. Yeah. It's been there for years, about three years. No, their concern was is they build a new, yeah. build a new, build your new house, that it would alter the terrain and then be adversely affecting their property across the street. We're a complete flat Um. Any other questions? Do you have anything else, Sergeant? Uh, we're just concerned when, if something happens to the well, who's going to be responsible for it because of the construction? So basically, it, DEM is the one who yes. states where wells have to be located a certain distance and stuff like that. Um, I, I, if they they have their well, and I understand what you're saying, I'm not you know minimizing that at all. But if they did everything that they were supposed to, um, it's kind of hard then to speculate if you then had a problem. I mean, for instance, last year, people that never had a problem with their wells due to the drought ended up having problems. If they have to place their well in a certain area of their yard, according to what DEM said, and they do that, that I think that's about as far as you can go with it. You know, they complied with what they were told to do, and the well is already existing. It's been in existence for three years. No, I'm concerned about my well. No, no, I, no. yeah, no, that's, I, that, and that's what I'm saying. It's, there's regulations, rules and regulations, according to DEM, where a well can be located, so on and so forth. They have already installed their well, because one of the questions, or I could be completely wrong, is I know you're worried about the grade. But also, there would be a possibility of not worrying just about the grade, but are there is there well going to draw from yours, so on and so forth. But they met all the requirements of the placements. So even if they start the work, I don't think they're going to necessarily govern your well because they they governed where they placed their well. Okay, I wasn't really concerned about that. It's just that now... Whenever we have heavy storms, even though there's a drain in the middle of the road, 
the water doesn't always go in it and it comes onto our property. Now it's in my carport. So, and mm -hmm. as John stated, that's one of the processes that will be reviewed at the permit stage. The engineer will then, in fact, um, review all of that stuff. So they'll design it so it doesn't do that. Right. You're like, so it, it will be part of the soil erosion and sedimentation plan that they have to apply for. And then the engineer then again reviews it so that if they do start the excavation process, all the water is not flowing down into your yard. Mr. Cronin, do you want to get, can you comment on any of this? Any, is that all you've got right now? Yeah, anything. Go ahead. The new home that's supposed to be constructed, yep. gonna, it's going to be a basement in there. And if, when they're digging, if it upsets the vein of the water flow, it could affect our well. Um, that's something the well, well, it's pretty deep. Yeah, well, they don't dig. It's not that they've got a dug down. Dug right down. Yeah. No, I mean, how, how deep is your well? 14 feet. Okay, so it's, it's double. <clears throat> I don't have an answer for that. Um, As it's all spring fed there. You know. Well, going back to what John was saying, um, the engineers would have to take all of that into consideration before they issue their permits. Um, I don't want to cut you short. Anything else that I'm writing it down? So, anything else that you have? Oh, uh, would you like a copy of what I just read? Thank you. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Anybody else have any, any concerns or any questions? John? <laughs> Mr. Cronin, anything you want to add? Sure, I'd love to have a peek at what you got. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the well. Sure. Oh, that. I'm sorry. Right, what is, I'm uh, sorry. Sorry, my friend. Oh, well, that's all right. <laughs> Mr. Chair, may I also um, remind you that an email was sent from a Another neighbor in favor of this project. Correct. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, oh, oh, thanks. The um, I I guess I think um, Madam Clerk did a fine job explaining what pre-existing non-conforming means. So we'll leave that alone. Um, the house is perpendicular. Uh, to the road because that's a stated preference of the town of Coventry zoning ordinance. Lot lines, houses, driveways, perpendicular to the road for safety uh, concerns and consistency of uh, location. So everybody understands, you know, what's theirs and where it is. Um, so th those are general guidelines that every builder, engineer, surveyor uh, follows because the town's made an affirmative statement that that's what they'd prefer. You know, that's a, um, as far as the water, uh, I think Mr. Sully did a fine job explaining that, you know, we're not building a neighborhood here, but we are building a house and it does have a foundation and we are going to have to submit uh, building plans to the building department to be reviewed by the town engineer um, to make sure that we don't change the grade in a, in a way that results in more water, more surface water leaving the property after construction or even during construction than currently does now, right? I mean, that's a require, that's a building requirement of this town and of the state DEM. Um, and that can be uh, sometimes handled very easily with some hay bales and other times, you know, temporary drainage has to be built and those kind of things until a lawn uh, can be established. Um, so I, I couldn't speculate now uh, as to, I don't know the depth of the water table or anything like that, but that is the town engineer's uh, job to make sure that we comply. And that's why every one of these decisions from this board and the planning board say that uh, we're going to comply with the set, the sedentary, uh, excuse me, sedimentation and drainage rules uh, during construction. In other words, we're going to contain it while we disturb it. We have a set of rules here. Yeah. The law, I mean, in the in the very bitter end, I mean, damage to, to the neighbor's well is a civil matter, right? If they think that we did it 
and they don't have water anymore, they have a civil action to pursue and to prove that's very difficult because groundwater isn't really owned by anyone. It's, you know, it's a protracted matter. But in the short term, the town ensures that we don't do anything that that will obviously disturb what is there. And if anything, um, usually the, this type of construction improves the drainage in a neighborhood such as this. This is an old neighborhood that's developed over time. We'll be applying modern design you know, to the yard and driveway, uh, as Mr. Iannotti suggested, to, uh, you know, uh, to redirect the water and so it doesn't end up in the street and across the street. Yep. So uh, I guess those would be my uh, responses. Um, in regards to their claim of uh, several or few uh, abandoned vehicles on the property, can we clean those up? I don't have any abandoned vehicles on that property, sir. I bring it in right now and show it to you. Thank you work for it. Yeah, so... Uh, um, and the snow plowing, the concerns about snow plowing and turning truck, turning trucks trucks around. How, you know, how does that come into play? I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, we're not. Uh, we're not changing um, the route or size of either the established roadbed or the right of way. We have no plans yeah, to interrupt. Town is using their property. To yeah, they have been using my property. We sir. I never mentioned it. Yeah. That seems to answer that. Yeah, no, it wasn't a mistake to give permission. You know, that's I'm wondering, you know. It's, it's you know, I, I like this board. I, I drive by these properties before I stand up here like a dummy. And, you know, it's not the biggest road you ever saw. And if the neighbors cooperate, it probably would be a lot well, better in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. We never could. Right. Yeah. In. yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Thank uh, you. Any, any questions for the board? Um, like, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. The solicitor has asked me to just quickly review uh, the reduced uh, setbacks that I briefly mentioned earlier um, as one of the reasons why the house is ending up where it is. And, and essentially, uh, because the side setbacks um, are, I guess the sh the short order is. Um, if we move the house back, we'd be here asking for a rear setback relief. If we moved it one side or the other, we'd be asking for a side uh, setback relief. So in order to uh, leave the garage and not interfere with the well or the septic, and frankly, to stay away from the existing cesspool, uh, this is where the best placement, both design-wise and to ask the least least relief necessary from this board, this is where the house ended up. Okay. Thank you. I think the question is for the. Yep. I think they just are answers. So, anything else you're doing in writing? Well, the planning board. Anybody want to take a look at this? I'd like to I think make a motion. We table till next month, so we can go look and see what it does. Um, absolutely. Um, the John, you said nobody's in the audience, that no one's on. Okay. Uh, this time, with the uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue this to uh, the April meeting, and before that, we can set up. Um, and take a ride up there and take a look at where everything's going to go. If you could, you could stake out where the house is going to be with absolutely what's Bob's thing? Red flares, uh, red stairs, or green one. <laughs> Just stake it out where it's going to be, and uh, and they'll follow John. The, your your department will take care to make sure that everything is done up the code. Okay. Yeah, so it wouldn't be our. How do you mean if this is approved? Yeah, so the building is we're going to address you know, mm -hmm. the best that we can of their concerns. Also. Yes. Okay. So we'll, motion made. Second. Motion made and seconded that we continue this to the April 5th. 
fifth meeting, um, and at what time we can also uh, uh, individually or a couple of us can go out and take a look at the site. And if you could make sure we have your number so we can call you so we're not just dropping in. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, just want to remind the board that this four members must be here on April 5th. It uh, can't be a different combination of the board. It couldn't be three of you and someone else. It's this four members that must. It's going to be the same four members. So if April 5th is a problem, now is the time before you continue it to a date. Well, he's not going to be. So that so you either got to have a special meeting or you're going to have to make it to a uh, the, the following meeting because it's got you can't have other people vote. It's the, only these board members can vote. And you four have to be here because we don't have a fifth member tonight. Okay, um, we'll we'll do an addendum and, and entertain to go to the main meeting, which is May third. May third. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Opposed? The ayes have. Thank you. That's next owner applicant is Joseph Shaw locations AP 316 lot 85 4186 Flat River Road zone is R3 applicant is seeking a renewal of a special use permit dimensional variance to construct a 576 square foot attached garage 5.8 feet from the property line where 50 is required. The original special use permit and dimensional variance was granted on March 3rd, 2021 and recorded in Coventry Land Evidence Records Book 2199, page 719. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Address, sir. Joseph Shaw, 4186 Flat River Road. It's right here. You swear to tell the whole truth, not but the truth from this board? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, just looking for a renewal on, um, you know, what Carrie had uh, mentioned there. Uh, I did not have a recommendation on planning and zoning last time I was here. Uh, we changed the setback to seven feet to appease the members' concerns. Um, I really have nowhere else to put it on the property. Uh, into the west side, I have an existing septic. I can't really access to the back. There'd be no reason to put it back there. The left side is really the only place I have. The neighbor's on board, but I know, obviously, you know, neighbors only neighbors for so long, you know, generations to come. I had entertained putting it in front of the property at one point. However, DOT owns quite a bit of my frontage. They were, eh, it was a whole mess. This was the easiest way to go. Um, it's a smaller garage than I wanted, but I'll take what I can. I, I've been improving the property for the last decade and uh, really love a spot to put my car, <laughs> have a little storage so I can get rid of that storage container that's been in my driveway for four years now. Got a nice purple wall. Oh, uh, yes, we're going to veneer that. Oh, gonna... <laughs> That's temporary. <laughs> Thank you, though. Are you going to take it down? Oh, we're just going to veneer over it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see it all the time on the drive by. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to continue that wall down that whole side there as well. And uh, as far as drainage purposes go, we'll continue the drainage at the existing driveway already has, which comes down and out to the side yard. Yep. And once we go towards the garage, we're going to go into a channel drain there at the front of the garage and also pitch it to the left and out back as well. Uh, I have about 80% of wetlands back there. So making them a little more wet, I don't think it's going to be <laughs> too big of a deal, but um, you know, I'm open to any suggestions you guys have as far as that goes. I guess the biggest thing is the setback that the house is already non-conforming. I think it's only 25, 26 feet from the property line itself. But when you came before us the first time, you got the approval to put it closer to your, to your property line, right? I did, yeah. So I was asking for 5.8 setback. Um, 
it, we, it was during a Zoom meeting back then, and uh, we agreed to do seven feet instead. Okay. Um, I just didn't, COVID really just, uh, the money, everything was so much money and, you know, every, everything was just kind of up in the air, you know, it just didn't, I, I didn't do my due due. You're, you're extending. I'm just extending it. Yeah. We want to break ground. It. No, we want to break. Changed. I want to break ground tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's Other changed. We ran out of the time. That's it. I just ran out of time. I extended the building permit. And then at that point was informed that the special use permit and, um, yeah, dimensional variants would have to be renewed there. Okay. Want to have a seat? Sure. John, you have anything? Nope, that pretty mm -hmm. much uh, covered it. Um, unfortunately, it, it had lapsed. This board did approve the same project once before. Um, so, yeah, that, that basically covers it. Okay. Anybody in the audience would like to speak either in favor or against or just have a question? Nobody buying you either. The board have any questions? So, this was approved. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Motion. Motion. Vote out tonight. Second. Motion made and seconded. Vote out tonight. All in favor say goodbye by the aye. 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 Vote nay. The ayes have it. Eddie, how do you vote? Um, uh, one, one, quick, one, quick, one quick second, sorry. Um, is the board voting in favor for the 5.8 feet as I, is I asked for? What you talked about that it's seven feet. Seven feet, okay, I just wanted to make that clear. Seven feet. Mm -hmm. okay. So our original agreement from when we gave it to them, we just approving exactly what that was. Okay. Eddie? Uh, approved. 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 The chair also approves. Motion to approve. Thank you. Anything else, Karen? Uh, no, unless you want to check to see if there's any public comment. Any behind it? Anybody like to speak before us? Motion to adjourn. I make a motion. Motion made second. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.